this Christmas I was listening to uh, Kelly Fitzgerald and her Christmas albums and Oscar Peterson's Christmas albums. You know, I'm just not really uh, I wasn't even uh, really hearing it all that many people. I'm sorry.
our Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it is a pleasure to be here with you today. As the bulletin says, I am Father Charles Browning. I am the rector of St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Mo'ili'ili, Ili, a neighborhood in Honolulu, Hawaii. So it is a pleasure to be with you. Aloha Kako, by the way, which is aloha to all of you. Or, aloha. In a way, it's kind of like saying aloha y'all, so that works. <laughs> um, just a little bit about me. I was, uh, I, 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 the Diocese of Southeast Florida is a home diocese for me. I was ordained as a priest out of this diocese. I was a parishioner at Bethesda by the Sea as a lay person. I uh, came back after seminary to serve as the associate rector at Holy Trinity in West Palm Beach. And then I was the rector of the chapel of St. Andrew and head chaplain of St. Andrew's School for about six years before the Lord called me out into a dot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, so it's good to be with you all today, especially on this day that is conventionally known as Low Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. Though I do have a few friends and folks that are here that are helping to mitigate that Low Sunday piece. So if you see some new faces, they're my entourage. Um, so yes, today is the first, second Sunday of Easter. Low Sunday, St. Thomas Sunday, because this Sunday is the Sunday where we read the story of St. Thomas, the Doubting Thomas story, as it is often known. I grew up as a Baptist, and when I was growing up as a Baptist, I always heard this story as a story of what not to do. Thomas was a bad guy. He was sort of a villain. He's the, he's the doubter. Don't be like Thomas. It wasn't until I came to the Episcopal Church that I heard it a little bit differently, to the point where I'm kind of convinced that St. Thomas has become a sort of patron saint for us Episcopalians. When I was a layperson, 
at, um, when I was a layperson at Bethesda by the Sea, it was um, Mother Lynn Jones, was the first person I ever heard preach a sermon on this passage that did not treat Thomas as simply the doubter, as the person not to be. She challenged us to think of Thomas as the questioner, Thomas as the challenger, Thomas as the one who's not going to accept easy answers. Of course, it was around this time as I was coming into the Episcopal Church that I learned that we Episcopalians celebrate ourselves as people who did not check our brains at the door. And so Thomas clearly was the one who did not check his brain at the door. He's not simply going to accept the word of others. He wants his own experience. He wants to touch God. And so in this, Thomas is very much like all of us. We see ourselves in him. However, at the same time, we have to deal with the fact that Jesus does reprimand him. Jesus does say, blessed are those who believe even though they haven't seen. In other words, Jesus is saying, Thomas, get over yourself and just believe. At the same time, though, Jesus acquiesces to Thomas's position, meets Thomas where he's at, and shows him his wounds and invites him to touch him. So as we consider Thomas, and we consider our own relationship to Thomas, and we consider the reality that what Thomas wants is probably very close to something we want, we then have to ask ourselves about this. What does Thomas want? What do we want? And this gets us into the conversation, the question of desire. What do we desire? I thought of this as I was on the plane coming over here, and I was reading um, Cities of God by a theologian named Graham Ward. Graham Ward is an important theologian in the early parts of the 21st century. Um, and he wrote his book, Cities of God, as a sort of offshoot of St. Augustine of Hippo's famous City of God, which is a book that chronicles the fall of the, cap of the Roman Empire and how it compares to the eternal reign of God. And so Graham Ward writes this book looking at where our cities stand in this era known as late stage capitalism and how, it, they, and how they compare to the eternal city of God. And so Graham Ward in his book talks about desire and points out how the cities in which we live are built around the idea of granting us desire. They are cities of desire. And we think about it. We look around at the world around us and there's constantly something trying to elicit a desire out of us or trying to satisfy a desire. I know when I'm driving east, here in Palm Beach County, and you see all the new properties coming up, and every one of them is mixed use, right? Mixed use. Live there, work there, play there, right? That's the, that's the trend right now. Same thing's happening in Hawaii. They're building the same thing, mixed use, that. It's a buzzword. It's a buzz concept. Well, why are we doing this? Well, because someone has determined or elicited the desire, the desire that what people want to live close to where they work and where they recreate. It wasn't that long ago, though, that we were told that people wanted to live away from where they work so they could commute into where they work, and that way they can kind of escape it or whatever, and so we built this whole car infrastructure around that culture. This isn't to say one is good or one is bad, but simply to acknowledge the reality that somewhere someone determined this was the desire that we're supposed to have. Outside of, outside of looking at it from a, a city and urban planning standpoint, we see it, we go to the mall, we watch TV, we see any advertisement, all of it is about eliciting a desire. Our cities, our culture is built around this idea that we lack something, and therefore I have something to fulfill what you're lacking. Only there's another problem because it is not in my financial interest to give you the thing that you are lacking. Because if you're lacking it, and I say you have it, and I say give me money, and I will give you the thing you lack, and you say that's awesome, and you give me that money, and then I give you that thing, guess what? We're done, it's a one-way exchange. But if I can give you just enough to sort of whet the appetite, or just to kind of do a slight fulfillment of what you're lacking, well then you'll keep coming again and again 
and again. And therefore, I get to make money again and again and again. And so this is the world we live in. We live in a world of manufactured desire, of elicited desire, of us being told that our lives are meaningless unless we buy a certain product. That's what it all is, so much of it. Buy this thing and your life will be fulfilled. That's the subtext of every advertisement. Pay attention, you'll see it. Every advertisement, every infomercial, infomercials, right? If you ever, I don't know if they, those are really a thing anymore. I don't, I watch streaming, I'm that age, I don't really see the advertisement, but I remember when infomercials were a big thing, they would always show people comically messing up some mundane task, and then they were introducing some product to kind of make you not comically mess up that mundane task, right? Create the problem, offer you the solution. That's what we've got. So we live in this world where there's manufactured desire. We live in this world where there's this sense that you need something from someone in order to be fulfilled. But as soon as you buy that thing, it's designed not to fulfill you. That's where we are. That's where we are. Graham Ward notes that a lot of this has to do with our concept of time and how we talk about time in our modern society. We can compartmentalize time. The past is the past, the present is the present, the future is the future. So right now, let's talk about the present, the now. Be present, right? That we hear that all the time. Be present. Well, in our society, being present is great because being present is now. Buy it now. Don't think about it. Just get it now. You need it now. Your life is empty. Buy it now. Why wait? There's more. Buy it now. And I think this is where Thomas kind of is. Because Thomas has lived his life with Jesus, but he's seen Jesus from a very particular point of view. He sees Jesus as his friend, as his buddy that he's been hanging out with for about three years and some change. Maybe he sees him as this wise teacher. Maybe he sees him as a revolutionary. Maybe he even sees him as, you know, a miracle worker. But Thomas sees Jesus in a very particular way. As we look through John's gospel, Thomas's characterization is very interesting. When Jesus starts making his way toward Jerusalem and after being told by all these people, hey, they're going to try to kill you if you go to Jerusalem. And Jesus says, well, that's kind of the point. That's what I'm here to do. Right. This is the inevitable thing. I'm going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to arrest me. They're going to crucify me. I'm going to die and then I'm going to rise again. Right. None of this is new to any of these disciples. He told them straight up what he was going to do. They just didn't want to hear it. And so in that moment, Thomas pretty fun and pretty humorously to me says, well, let's go to Jerusalem so we can die with him. Right? This kind of gallows humor, I'm just going to go with you mentality. Just a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, not even that long ago, a few, last week or a week before, Maundy Thursday, we remember the story of the washing of the feet? Well, during that, during that conversation that Jesus has with his disciples in that upper room, during that conversation, Jesus is laying all of this stuff out for them, and he tells them that I'm going to a place you can't go yet, but I'm going to come back and get you. And Thomas says, Lord, how do we know the way? How can we know where you're going? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. In other words, I'm preparing the way. I'm the thing that you're looking for. I'm the thing that satisfies. But Thomas doesn't hear it. So when he gets the word that Jesus is back, he wants the Jesus that he knows. He wants the same Jesus. Sure, he's willing to accept that he's got the wounds, but he sees the wounds simply as evidence that it's the same guy and not as an imposter. Right? But Thomas wants more because he says to the other disciples, he says, I don't want to just see those wounds. You guys got to see them. I don't want to just see them. I want to stick my finger in them. I want to touch them. I want to embrace it. I want to be close to it. Only then will I believe. I want the presence of God in the present, in the now, as I expect it, as I want it. That's where Thomas is. And let's be honest, a lot of us are there too. I know that's true for me. There are times in my life where I really want God to just do what I want him to do. I sometimes want God to be the product that performs. The problem is God is a person. And like all persons, they're not controllable. They do what they want. God is notorious for just doing what God wants and expecting me to just go along with it. 
But again, Jesus acquiesces to Thomas's doubts, to Thomas's position. And he says, fine, look, if you need to touch the wounds, if you need that, here they are. It's because Jesus knows, right? Jesus knows that often the things that we feel will fulfill us, that will give us the answers, don't always fulfill us. Instead, they wind up making us more aware of the emptiness, of the thing that we are lacking. As Christians, we understand, at least we're supposed, we're supposed to understand, that that feeling that we get when we acquire something that's supposed to fulfill us and it doesn't, is supposed to further open up that space in us to realize, no, the only thing that's going to truly satisfy is God. It is to make us long for God more. Maybe we think of the old Billy Graham illustration that says, there is a God-shaped hole in all of us and we keep trying to fill it with something else. That's kind of where we are. And so we, are, we as Christians come to that understanding that nothing is going to truly fulfill us but God himself. One of the great paintings that depicts the story of Thomas and Jesus is Caravaggio's The Incredulity of St. Thomas. It's very famous. Chances are you've seen it. You can look it up on Wikipedia on your own if you've never seen it. But it's a picture that depicts Jesus in a darkened room with his disciples Jesus, his robe is pulled down, he's bare-chested, and he's pulling Thomas toward him. And Thomas' finger is inside the wound on Jesus' side. And the great thing about that painting is if you zoom in on Thomas' face, or if you ever have the chance to see it in person and look at Thomas' face, it captures the emotion of his brain before his mouth speaks. That moment where he says, right before he says, my Lord and my God. Because it's in that moment when he gets what he thinks he wants that he realizes he got something completely different. He didn't just get his buddy back. He got his Lord and his God. And he only found that through, the, through Jesus meeting him where he was. So great, we hear this and we say, that's awesome. Awesome for Thomas. Well, what about us? Right? God's still in the abstract for us. We're still expected to accept the word of other people. How do we encounter God? Where do we experience God? Why can't we have a to- an experience like Thomas? But we do. We do. It's going to happen in about 10 minutes or so. When we gather around this altar, and we have this bread, and we have this wine, that we are told by Jesus, not by me or anyone else in the church, by Jesus, that it is his body and it is his blood. And so for people like me, with my ADD-esque brain, that has a hard time with conceptualizing things in the abstract, to be able to put my hands on something that I'm told is God is a powerful thing. And so in a moment, we get that opportunity. We get to touch God. We get to hold God. Then bizarrely, we get to eat and drink God. But all that means then is that his flesh and his blood becomes our flesh and our blood. And we are now constituted as the body of Christ. And so when we embrace one another, when we serve one another, when we interact with each other, hopefully we see God at work, God present in each other. And so in those times, we receive each other and we offer ourselves as God for each other. And so in that, this huge desire, this desire that can only be satisfied by God, is something that can be satisfied by God. He just uses the things that he has given us to satisfy that desire and satisfy that longing. And so that in the community of the church, When we receive the Eucharist and when we interact with each other and experience the love of God between each other, in those moments we too can exclaim, my Lord and my God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Well, I was going to invite you to stand, but you went ahead and did it. <laughs> Let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Christians, what do we believe? the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people are guided by Form 4, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and revel in your glory in the world. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the departed and all the victims of violence, wounded and deceased in the Dorral shooting. Those in terrorism, national disasters, especially those in Haiti, Ukraine, Israel, and the Middle East. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. You, Lord, in your memory. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your crea own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, <coughs> our local authorities and government, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray we may share with all of your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, Charles, our celebrant, for the church in the province of Alexandria in the Anglican cycle of prayer, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for the vestry staff and members of St. David's, for Emma Erickson, Marth Lab, Corey Walters, Dale Puglisi, celebrating their birthdays this week, for Charles and Margie Sandell, Matt and Marie Hogan, celebrating their anniversaries, 
for our expectant mother, Shay, and for our search committee, Howard Barrett, Jennifer Elmore, Janice Jock, Christy Lee, Sarah Pete, Yvonne Wollaston, and Cecil Ray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. share with one another a sign of God's peace. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Welcome everybody. Where is everybody from last week? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to St. David's. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome um, Father Charles. I said Father Thomas. <laughs> Father Charles, welcome, Father. You know, what's it? Aloha. Welcome and uh, thanks for your inspiration, inspirational sermon there. Um, any other visitors? I know he brought the whole crew with him. <laughs> Welcome to St. David's. Please sign the guest book as you leave and we have a good reception, nice reception at the church hall after you leave. All right. Um, a few things. Father Todd is gone. But we're still asking for donations. And it's not, <laughs> it's not donations. We have, we have um, the debt is paid. But we have other stuff that we have to do. And I'll explain to you a little later. But um, if you haven't given yet, please think about it. And uh, give what you can give towards um, all the programs we have here at St. David. One of the things we're doing and we have to do it before we, we start advertising for a new rector. We have to get a new live stream system. If you watch the live stream, you have seen how poor it is. So we have to get a new audio video system and we have to get a new, an updated website. Um, Jennifer is working on the updated website, so um, we are pretty much getting that done and the audio video system, we having a gentleman come out here on Tuesday to look at our church and give us ideas of what he think we will need and how much it will cost. So you see, the debt is paid off, but we still need money. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. 
You know, I'm the bearer of bad news, but hey, we need it. So if you haven't given yet, I'd appreciate if you think about it and give. Our next CIR, by the way, is not no longer PIR, priests in residence, now it's CIR, cler clergy in residence. So he starts next week, Bishop Todd. And um, by the way, he want to be called Bishop Todd and not Father Todd. So when you meet him, welcome him as Bishop Todd, not Father Todd. Um, he starts next week, and he goes on until October the 6th, okay? And if um, we haven't gotten a priest yet, and if it, he wants, if he's in agreement, we can extend the contract every three months. So we look forward to having Bishop Todd with us starting next week. Um, the fundraising committee is uh, planning our next dinner dance, as I said last week, and the, um, the, um, the theme for this dinner dance, and it's a long theme, but black and white dinner dance masquerade with music throughout the ages. And I didn't come up with that. The rest of the committee came up with that. So, what you'll do, get your black and white ready, because that's what's going to be the theme. And um, we were planning for the 29th when we thought we were going to have it at the Jewish Center, but we're not going to have it at the Jewish Center because they're a little more expensive than what they charged us last year. So we found another venue. I won't add, um, announce it until next week. But um, those of the committee who have been there, they really like it. And it was referred to us by one of our parishioners here, Ms. Beverly Wilson. So hopefully we'll go and look at it this week, and next Sunday we'll come back and tell you for sure that we're going to use that location. And it's in Wellington, so it's not far. Okay, so that's the fundraising committee. Um, the search committee, yes, we are working on the profile. Jennifer is putting some last touches on the profile. And then, but we have to get the website up to date and we have to get the audio video fixed before we can even advertise. So that's where we are right now. Um, anything else? Birthdays this week? Huh? Okay. Birthday this week, we have Miss Emma Erickson, Marta Le Leab, Corey Walters, and Dale Puglisi. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Allison Beechner, and if you have not had the, if I have not had the privilege of yet meeting you, um, I am the youth director here at St. David's, and I have a few announcements for you guys today. Uh, first of all, being that today, after the service, um, maybe a few minutes after coffee hour, even we will be all meeting at the. Um, Palm Beach Skate Zone off of Lake Worth Road and the Turnpike and the youth will have an opportunity to go ice skating and get out of the somewhat heat a little bit. It's been a nice spring so far um, and that is going to be $22 per person including the skate rental and it's not only for the youth if you have kids that you think would enjoy coming to ice skate with us if you yourself are a skater please come and join us and just um, 
take some time in fellowship with the youth. Um, next week at 9 a.m. prior to the 10 a.m. service, we will be having our youth group Bible study, and that is right over here in the Sunday Sunday school rooms, just over to your left when uh, you drop off for for Sunday school. Um, the youth group will be to the left. And we'll have refreshments, and we encourage the youth to bring their Bibles as we'll be uh, diving in. And so I would love to see um, all of our youth there for that Bible study. Uh, lastly, if you look on your announcements, down um, on the bottom half of it, there is a uh, youth group acolyte breakfast. That date has been changed from uh, the 28th of, of this month, April and we are moving it to May the 19th. So please disregard the date. It is still happening, just uh, we moved the date around, and so I apologize for any inconvenience with that. Um, have a blessed Sunday. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Jay Weber. I'm the junior warden here of the Vestry, which is Church Council. Um, just want to remind everybody to take a moment uh, to look at the announcements. It lets you know what's going on here. Uh, we've got Bunko uh, scheduled for Saturday the 27th. Um, we're also doing uh, uh, sandwiches for St. George's, of course, every Wednesday at 8.30 to 9.30. So please uh, make those sandwiches at home and uh, bring them here to the parking lot. It's a very important part of our ministry. We do it every week. So uh, please uh, make that part of your schedule. Um, if you uh, are a visitor, you are welcome to come to Hospitality Hour with us over in the, uh, the, the school building. Um, I encourage everybody to take a look at our Facebook page and our web page, even if we're improving it, uh, to, let, uh, to, to follow what's been going on. And finally, I want to invite anybody who has been baptized to accept communion with us today. Thank you.
Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with St. Thomas, St. David, our patron, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people. Body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. Body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ given for you, keep you Life. Does she receive? The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I have to go get more, I'll be right back. Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. Lily, in the body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The 
body of Christ given for you keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ broken for you keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ given for you keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I lay my hand upon you, O child of God, and pray God's blessing on you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God's presence dwell with you and remain with you this day, now, and always. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ broken for you, keep you in everlasting life.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in your prayers this week, remember the poor, remember the oppressed, remember those in prison, whatever their prison walls might look like, and never fail to invite someone to know Jesus Christ as Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Kamakua, Kekeki, and Kauhane Hemolele, be with you and remain with you, Moloa. Amen. <laughs>